Now that we've looked at critical thinking, here are some ways of learning and innovation. I'm going to draw my crazy little picture of a brain, and I hope it's not too insulting, but this is my little silly diagram of a brain. Up here we have the front part, and this is the cognitive part. I'm going to put a C there. Then we've got the back and bottom part of the brain. This is the subconscious part. It's where a lot of subconscious activity happens. And then here in the center, this is more about the sides than so much the center, but it works for my little silly diagram here. This is where our resources are, and there's many different resources and areas and skills, and we've got right and left side and math and art and music and sciences and all kinds of different skills in different areas of the brain here in the resource area. These are my little resources all over the place. The key with any learning and innovation is to keep practicing until it feels like too much and then keep going. Keep going and going. It feels weird. Keep going. It feels uncomfortable. That's strange. That's too much time. What are you doing? What are you doing to my children? What are you doing to me? This feels funny. Keep going or you'll never learn. That's what good practice feels like. When do you stop? Once you reach fatigue error. This is when you're fatigued from just going too long and you make mistakes just because you're tired from doing it so much. That's when you stop. But actually, you don't want to stop. You need to shift gears. Just do something different. Use a different skill set. If you've been studying Japanese, switch over to English for a while. Or if you've been studying for your Spanish class, maybe do something with math. Once it just doesn't work, go do something else. You could eat. You could also just study a different subject. Shift gears. Don't just stop for the whole day. This allows you to rest your tired resources. Again, capital R for the resources centers of your brain. There are many different areas of your brain. Once you stop doing a particular activity, that thing, that activity, is no longer in the cognitive part of your brain. And then it moves over to the subconscious part of your brain. That's where it actually goes to work. That's where it actually starts learning. In the subconscious part of your brain, it's as if you have a whole team of researchers working without you knowing it. You need to use a resource in your brain, think about it, work it in the cognitive part of your brain, in the C, and then when you stop thinking about it, the back of your brain goes to work and thinks about it in a different way. So by shifting gears, you rest tired resources and you get to strengthen and practice other resources, but the idea also goes into the subconscious work area of your brain. This is really how to understand something, how to learn something, and it's important both for education and for innovation to try to get new ideas or even to overcome writer's block. The innovation process where you're actually trying to solve a problem creatively to get that aha moment, the light bulb, the apple hitting you on the head, which actually Sir Isaac Newton didn't get hit on the head with an apple. He watched one fall from across the courtyard, but that's another story. First, you need to do work and research. Don't just read books. You actually need to try and do and work and use. Create problems by trying to do it in the field. Field work is where you actually learn. That's where the boots actually go on the ground. That's where all of your ideas will actually be used. You don't know what ideas you need to innovate unless you're actually in the environment where those ideas will be used, doing the things that will be done when those ideas are used. Diverse. Make everything you do different. Don't just do it one way. Do it other ways. Diversify. Stay diverse. Be diverse. Make the word diverse part of everything that you do, as well as daily. 
Don't just do something once or twice or once a week. You need to be doing something regularly, regularly, even if only five minutes. If you need an innovation concept, do something with it daily for a long time and then you'll understand. Rest strategically. Take breaks at strategic times, like I just explained. Reaching the point of fatigue error, shifting gears. Know when it's time to rest. Let all of your ideas go into your subconscious to work and have little or nothing in the cognitive part of your brain. One way to do this is called sleep. Other people do this through meditation where they think about a single idea to try to rest their brain. It's a very good part of thinking. If you never rest your brain or if you never rest your body, it's going to be difficult to have innovative ideas. Take a weekly Sabbath. It can be any day. We need at least one day a week where we wind down. Someone who rests one day a week will accomplish more in his life than someone who does not rest. Get a Sabbath, choose a day, guard it like gold, obey it like the law, and your life will be a hundred times more effective. Also, take a rest just before showtime. Strategically rest. Study every day, rest and play one day before the test. Get a good night's rest but rest just before showtime. Or if you're an actor and you're going on stage and it's going to be the big show tomorrow, review the script lightly before, but you need to be studying every single day. You need to be reading your script daily in diverse places, loud, soft, outdoors, indoors, on stage, and in the car. But just before the big performance, that's when you need to rest. Maybe review it a little bit, but pretty much for the most part, take a rest. And remember, anything is possible. You will never think of new innovative ideas if you think that things are impossible. Anything is possible. That's the very concept of critical thinking itself.